Welcome to Evening Prayers from Stamford Methodist Circuit with me, Tony Law, on Friday the 13th of September. We've been celebrating this week the God we encounter in various ways, from the mountaintops and quiet places, through our communities and through our learning. Today, as we begin to bring these thoughts together, we commit to God who shares and guides our future. So we'll start this evening with our shared prayer, the Lord's own prayer, a prayer for the coming of God's kingdom and for guidance to live the kingdom here and now. Please share, as always, using any form or language that's appropriate for you, as we say together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now hear the word of the Lord spoken through the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 42. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him, and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged till he establishes justice on earth. In his teaching, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, the creator of the heavens who stretches them out, who spreads out the earth with all that springs from it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and a light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. God for the future. It's the Old Testament prophets that look most clearly to the future, I think. In New Testament times, as we've said, the community expected the return of Christ and the end of the age imminently at any time. So much of their forward thinking was about being ready for that change. But the prophets of the exile, particularly, were looking forward to a time of restoration. Not a nostalgic expectation that things would be restored as they believed they were before, but examining what God required of a restored people to build a new society. And this is highly relevant, of course. In the church calendar now, most of September falls within the new or newish season of creation tide. We think about our place in creation and our commitment to its future. The future is uncertain. We've not been there, of course. We can plan, but plans tend to be disrupted. But Isaiah isn't talking about specific plans. Isaiah is talking about the principles for building society as God wants it. So we, God's people, recognise that we live under God's creating power, however we understand that. We recognise the call of God in righteousness, the prophet says. And the promise of God's care is for a purpose, a covenant for those within the community, but equally an example and a light for those outside. We recognise that phrase, a light for the Gentiles, it was quoted by Simeon at Jesus' presentation in the temple. We inherit that promise and that charge. Jesus said, you are light to the world. And he said, you don't turn on a light and then hide it. You put it where it can give light so that people can see, can see each other, and can do things. The Bible is full of stories of people who were called by God to leave a settled life, and strike out into an unknown future. Abraham, Moses, the whole people as they left Egypt. 
Peter, Andrew, James and John and all the others who, who Jesus called out of one life into another. Arguably even Jesus himself. The promise was not about what would happen, but about the God who would be with them. The responsibility always began and begins with if. If we stay close to God, he will stay close to us. For the future then, God gives us a promise, but also a responsibility. Our past histories are many and varied, some lives straightforward, others unbelievably difficult or strewn with mistakes. We may have to deal with the consequences. But we go forward as a new creation, as Paul says. We can remember our high moments, take strength in the quiet, grow always and learn more of God, and both hope and trust for the future as we try to live the kingdom. So our hymn. In Singing the Faith, this is 478. Hymn writer Fred Kahn guides us to thankfulness for past, present and future, and echoing Jesus' parable of the servants who were entrusted with their master's wealth, he guides us to ask for strength to go forward, taking the risks of faith. So let's pray. God of past, present and future, be with us as we seek your will and take our next steps. May we go out with joy, trusting and hoping in you. May we strive to love our neighbour as ourself, listening and speaking with respectful kindness, embracing difference. Remembering how much all have been forgiven by you, may we offer friendship, grant mercy and seek peace and justice in our shared future. Amen. God of the grimy window, God who sees beyond all that obscures, freshen my gaze, open wide the vistas that sing on the horizon, offering us a glimpse of the not yet nestled in the now. Go between God, God of each yesterday and of every tomorrow, of transitions that pivot us between your now and your not yet. Stand strong beside us in the moment. 
Help us in times of shaky uncertainty to stand firm, to hold solid ground with those enveloped in war, in famine, in climate disaster, to offer a vision of sharing instead of a world of greed, a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. As you turned the world upside down and inside out on the cross, so companion us through all uncertainties, and so may we remain strong in resurrection hope and stable in undying love. Amen. And so our Celtic blessing. In the silence of the stars, in the quiet of the hills, in the heaving of the sea, speak, Lord. In the stillness of this room, in the calming of my mind, in the longing of my heart, speak, Lord. In the voice of a friend, in the chatter of a child, in the words of a stranger, speak, Lord. In the words of a writer, in the image of an artist, in the music of a singer, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen. Thank you for sharing with us this evening. So now may the blessing of God beyond us, God alongside us and God within us yet unbounded, go with us all tonight and always. Amen.